Hello everybody, welcome along to this video. This is Mr Johnson teaches how to avoid comma splicing. As it says beneath that, part of my core skills revision series, a few videos that you'll find on this playlist, just trying to support you really with some skills which are really fundamental and really at the basics of doing well in English. And then also some which might stretch and push and uh, remind you of things that will gain you extra marks when it comes to ultimately sitting some of your exams. Um, as it says on the bottom of the screen there, you'll need to be ready to pause this video to attempt the the exercises just simply watching this isn't going to fix anything you need to actually try it and practice and the video and the excuse me not the video but the picture up in the top right of the screen right now that is actually uh, a splice when you join two ropes together it's called splicing and actually that's a really key image to have in mind with comma splicing and what it is it's about joining two things together and with a comma in this case which actually is what you shouldn't be doing so uh, this is something to watch out for uh, why punctuation matters, just watch out for Rachel Ray who finds inspiration in cooking her family and her dog. This is where commas are needed to try and make something make a bit more sense. Uh, however, too many commas or commas in the wrong places actually can cause problems. So just to really whip back to the basics before we move on with the idea of comma splicing and how to fix it. Um, sentences are made up of clauses at the most basic level and you might well have heard from primary school and remember from primary school drop-in clauses for example uh, part of a sentence with a verb by which we could say we went to the beach in that sentence that is a clause that sentence contains one clause in the verb because it's got one verb in it whereas if you wanted to extend it we went to the beach and played volleyball what we've got there is a compound sentence because we've got two clauses because we've got two verbs within there as well and they're linked together by a connect which you might hear called a conjunction at some times as well. We just need to have that in mind when it comes to comma splicing because comma splicing is where you've got those two clauses but instead of using a connective or a, a really strong piece of punctuation commas are there. They're splicing the two sentences and joining and gluing if you like those two sentences together but they shouldn't be. Commas, the job of a comma is not to join sentences together. So as I've said there already, really, I'm not going to reread that for you. I think you can probably just quickly see that yourself. But that's what we want to avoid. Two commas, sorry, two clauses being joined by a comma. And here are some top tips, right? This is where you really, really want to start paying attention because these are some of the fixes. I have so many students who are writing, they're enthusiastically writing, they don't really pay attention to what they're actually doing. And they move from idea to idea, from clause to clause, and they just drop a comma in there between thinking that's enough. So this would be a good example. The soldier pointed his gun, he was going to shoot. There are two clauses. You've got pointed as one verb and you've got going to in the other verb as the other clause there. So you've got two clauses. That comma in the middle is too weak for that. It needs to either be, well, we could do this first. Option number one, split that sentence into two separate sentences using a full stop. It's basic, but it works. The soldier pointed his gun. He was going to shoot. They work really well as two sentences. Those two clauses being actually separated from each other. Alternatively, same sentence, you could use a semicolon. I've got a video on semicolons on this channel, uh, in this playlist as well, that you could check out. Um, it would work something like this, because you've got two roughly equal clauses there. The soldier pointed his gun, he was going to shoot. Those two ideas, pointing the gun and about to shoot with the gun, are connected. So therefore, you can link them. A comma isn't strong enough, but a semicolon absolutely is a strong punctuation mark. Now, alternatively, I'm a real fan of dashes and will encourage my classes to use a dash. And in case you need reminding, a dash looks something like that. The soldier pointed his gun. He was going to shoot. Dashes are very good at joining clauses together, just like it's done there. So in fact, commas mustn't join clauses, but they can. Uh, you can use any of those three options that we've got there. So here comes another example quickly, just to really try and embed this and get this stuck in your brain. So Charlie kicked the door. He was fed up. Now we've got two clauses there, He's and they're slightly different. They're on the same thing. Kicking the door and being fed up have probably got something to do with each other, but that comma in the middle just too weak. So again, number one, split it. Charlie kicked the door. He was fed up. And I think that second clause, that second sentence now works really well on its own. It's quite a strong one. And the full stop draws attention to it. Uh, alternatively, the semicolon would work really there as well. Charlie kicked the door. He was fed up. Links it and makes it more dramatic. Uh, alternatively, as we've touched upon already, a dash would work there as well. Dash is linking the two clauses really successfully.
So here it comes, it's over to you now watching this video. The pause symbol is up there because I would like you to write those sentences down and where I've highlighted those commas in red, I'd like you to change them for something else. It could be a full stop, it could be a semicolon or a dash are the ones I'm really pushing for here and that's because that really does impress an examiner. When you're using those punctuation marks correctly, um, you, you end up showing yourself as a more thoughtful and creative person with a wider knowledge. Um, the dash I'd particularly draw your attention to. But anyway, I'm going to go quiet for a few seconds in order to allow you to pause this video and I'd like you to have a go at those now, removing the comma splices. Okay, over to you. Right. Unpausing this video means that you should be ready now to see the answers. Now with the answers, in fact, it's just important for me to point out that actually there is no one answer. This is a judgment call. Uh, English very rarely has an exact answer where one thing works and another thing doesn't. Uh, this is one of those where a judgment is needed. So I'm going to show you what I would have used, but a full stop, a semicolon or a dash would have worked equally well in those sentences. So for the first one, I removed the comma and instead I think a semicolon uh, works really well there. Number two, I went for a dash. I felt that would link to the two clauses quite well together. You could have put a full stop, of course, or a semicolon indeed. Now there's a dash again, I think that one works really well in linking those two clauses together. With number four there, suddenly a light went on, a shiver trickled down his spine. I think the semicolon is a bit stronger there, it sort of acts more dramatically I think as well perhaps than a dash. And finally Joe tried to shake the creature from his leg, it tightened its grip and licked its lips. Long claws there, semicolon seems to work really well because they're roughly balanced. Dashes work really quite well, where maybe you've just got a long set of words on one clause and a very short clause, a dash works, semicolons are generally for equal size clauses. But that's all I'm going to go for uh, on comma, comma splicing. Uh, as I said, the video uh, is now done and the rope picture in the bottom right is just reminding you what a splice is. Don't splice your two clauses together with commas. Commas are too weak. Instead, show off one of those more advanced types of punctuation. Even a full stop used there is more dramatic and actually adds effect. Do check out some of my other videos. I've got others to do with punctuation and other uh, parts of English as well. In the meantime, I'm just going to say thanks very much for watching this video and uh, goodbye.